Okay, seventh graders, we're gonna to continue to add some um, extras to the barn. So we're gonna put a loft up here. So you need to go to your vanishing point on the left. Decide how high you want that. Vertical. Vertical. And to the left again. You're gonna see thickness in that. So um, you're gonna have thickness right there. It's below the horizon line. So you're going to have that thickness go to the right. Erase that little tail that I have there. And you're gonna see a little bit of the thickness right here because I'm still below the horizon line. Now in that window, you can put, um, I've seen people put hay um, coming out of there. I've seen people put a chicken in there. Um, you decide what you want to put in that little cute window up there. I've seen people put um, flowers and things like that. The bottom here is open. Um, you might have a toolbox inside there. If you have a toolbox, the toolbox needs to sit up against the wall. So just like we did those other boxes, when we did boxes against boxes, I'm gonna make that L and notice how it sits up against the um, wall. And then you can go ahead and put the front, the corner, corner and then put the top on. Now you can do the details on that box. Um, if it's a toolbox, it will have some drawers. Um, they'll have different things like that in that toolbox. Then you of course would erase the lines so that it wouldn't be see-through. Um, also, if you have a sidewalk coming out, it still has to do the vertical um, and go to the vanishing point. So if it's a little bit wider than the door, because your sidewalks are usually a little bit wider, you can go out and out. I'm going from the right vanishing point up here. And if it's gonna go to the driveway, say let's you have a road that goes to the barn. Um, Definitely won't be a blacktop road, but it might be a gravel road. Again, it would be going to the right vanishing point. And then I wanna hook these two up so I can go from there to there. I would have to go to my vanishing point on the left. But I always have a few people that say, but what if it's a rounded sidewalk? Not a big deal, just like how we did our letters. You would just take that corner and you would round that corner up. Now, a lot of farmers around here like to um, put flowers and things like that. Milk cans are a really popular thing. Uh, if you do a milk can, before doing the milk can, let's do a silo, silo on the back. Um, if you have a silo, first of all, a silo is larger than the barn. So it's gonna be taller than the barn, depending on where you put it. If it's in here, it's gonna be really tall. If you put it back here, it's gonna be, um, just a little bit taller than the building. So as you know, a cylinder starts out with that. Um, let's move this over a little bit so you can see that. Um, a foreshortened circle. We can't see it, so we can start out with that half one. There's different kinds of silos. There's the blue silos. Um, that are super, super skinny and tall. There's the old stave silos, the ones that are made out of cement that are a little fatter and rounder. Um, so there's different kinds of silos. Check them out before you start drawing them. So I'm gonna do more of a tall one. It's taller than the barn. Um, and then in the silo, notice it goes round, but here is the horizon line. So that means that it's going to go up and curve up instead of down. So depending on, and if it caps over the top of it, just a little bit. And it might take a little bit, sometimes it's easier just to kind of do a couple lines and then put your strong line in there later. 
So there I have my strong line. Also, this, the lines are going to curve up. And sometimes this will have this kind of thing happening in there. The lines will curve up when it's above the horizon line. As it gets closer to the horizon line, they're going to start flattening out. As they go below the horizon line, they're going to curve the other direction. So make sure that if you put one of these in, that you're putting them in the right direction. Also, um, let's continue uh, with the extras. Sometimes the silo will have um, a ladder on it. Sometimes um, it have a chute on it, an elevator. Depending on that, you need to check out the details. Also, if you decide that you want to put a field in here, field is still going to go to the vanishing point. Let's say this is where my field is. On the back side of the barn, I'm going to put that in and with the tractors nowadays, they are spot on with straight rows. Actually, they've been doing straight rows for a long, long, long time. So you can put a field in. This would just be a plowed field, no crops in it. If you decide to put crops in it, um, they're going to go straight up, and I'll show you that in a minute. Make sure you're still going to your vanishing point. Oops, it got a little wide there. So you get closer together as they go in the distance. And you can continue that field, put another row here. Wasn't very evenly spaced. And they're gonna run into being thicker and thicker. Um, then of course you're gonna have to erase this guideline right here. If it's corn or something like that, um, the plant is gonna go straight up like this. They'll get smaller and shorter as they go into the distance to nothing. Next row. Next row. They go straight up. Front row is going to be the tallest, so make sure you make that the tallest. These are going to get shorter and then shorter. Um, the front one's going to have details. You can put, depending on what the time of the year it is. And just deal with the first two rows um, and the front rows. And these you can just put little things happening in the background. They don't have to be, um, and they shouldn't be as detailed. I would continue with this corn stalks, corn stalks, so on and so forth. And you would continue that on. Um, when you're doing something like this, you need to ground this. So make sure you ground that. Um, as you go back to adding more details, uh, you could put a row of windows in here. If this is like a, a loafing barn or something like that, row of windows, you could just do a row like that. In a row like this. And then break these up into smaller windows like there's a window. And of course, they'll get closer and closer as you go. And then you could put the thickness into those windows. And then you have to clean the thickness up. 
this way. That little tiny little line. And then you would clean that up. When you put glass, so if there's, I'm gonna darken this a little bit. If there's glass, you just do something like that to show the different glass. Um, siding on the barn, a lot of barn has barn wood. You can do the double pane barn wood. And you continue on with that all the way down so you have that barn look to it. Um, sometimes people put hay bales, the round ones. If you do that, they'd go to the vanishing point. That's a good way to start out anyhow. Um, and of course they would get random as they go. Around hay bales. Um, you can put, uh, of course, more details onto that back field. Um, let me just show you some more examples. Oh, trees. If you're doing a tree, remember, a tree provides shade for a barn or a house. They're going to be large, and you can add a tree. Trees branch out, they do Y's. So you want to add those Y branches in and then put your leaves on top of that. We'll be talking about more about details. Closer up the tree, the more details it will have. So is this in the right proportion, the, the bale compared to the tree? Sure, because if you think about the bales, they're much smaller than the tree. So you're gonna have the tree. Um, animals, let me show you a few things um, some other people have done. And actually, um, if you put like a tupola, if you put something on the roof, notice what I did, I went Parallel with the side, and then to the vanishing point, to the right, and then parallel again, so that it sits on, on the roof, and then you have to add, oops, it should be gone. Go to the right, 